Zero G confirmed. Leaving Earth orbit. Velocity 15,000, 16,000, 18,000, 20,000. Beginning evasive maneuvers. Proximity alert. 200 miles to planet's surface. Initiating auto landing sequence. Runway ends in 1,000 feet. 200 feet. 50 feet. Location, Canyon Edge. Alert. That's really long. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of many of the computers, Allison Blanchard. Uh, that was the mission space. Next clip. Hi there. It's your friend, Timothy Mouse. As you know, Dumbo is a real high flyer. So to make your flight a safe one, be sure to stay seated with your seatbelt fastened, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside. And for all you grown-up types, be sure to watch your kids. To make your pecky doing fly higher, just raise the magic lever right in front of you. Okay, Dumbo, let's get this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Timothy Mouse from the Dumbo attraction, Chris Edgerly. My friends, this is Sarah sharing with you a few handy tips. Once on board, be sure to place your supplies and loose items in the pouch in front of you. Now, for your safety, you must remain seated with your seat belt fastened. Make sure you keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the transport. Watch your children. And remember, do not gaze into the eyes of the idol. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Salah, Bob Joel. Por su propia seguridad, permanezca sentado con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo mientras que el tren esté en movimiento. Por favor, cuide a los niños. Gracias. The look delightful voice of the safety tram, Yeni Alvarez. Welcome to It's a Small World. For your safety, please remain seated throughout your voyage, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat, and please watch your children. Thank you. We have encountered a brief delay. Your voyage will resume in just a moment. Thank you. Please remain seated until your boat comes to a complete stop at the dock, and you are asked to disembark. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, PJ Be patient. It takes a little doing to set these things up. <laughs> okay, okay, boys. Take it easy, take it easy. Now we're ready to start. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I'll be right with you. <clears throat> Give me a little intro there, Gomer. From the Country Bear Jamboree, Peter Redden. The sliding doors on your time machine will close automatically. For your safety, remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle. And please watch your children. Ladies and gentlemen, your slow moving job, your time machine will slowly rotate back and may there stop momentarily. For your safety, remain seated at all times. I should have read that. Fred Tanishore! Robot 36! Ahoy there, crew! For your safety, remain seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat, and watch your children. And no flash pictures. Prepare to make sail! From Paris, the Caribbean, for Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, later today, we're delighted to present the Pixar Play Parade, starring all your favorite Disney Pixar pals. Come join us along the parade route later today and help us count down to fun. Thank you. Camille Dixon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. 
The lights surrounding the rivers of America will be dimmed so you can fully experience our breathtaking fireworks spectacular, Remember, Dreams Come True, presented by Honda. Please try to remain in the same area until the lights return to normal. Thank you. Bill Rock. So, uh, what I thought I would do, since we've all heard their voices, I'm sure you want to know exactly how they all got started and fascinating stories from their career. So I'm going to start with my friend Allison at the end of the panel. Hi, Allison. Hi there, Brian. Hi. Hey, do you recall the first Disney job you ever had? Well, the first Disney job I ever had was actually working as a sculptor and model builder at Walt Disney Imagineering. And uh, because I was there, they knew I was an actor and I was right down the hall, they would call me up from time to time and say, hey, can you run down here and do a scratch track? So I would blow off the foam dust and take off my paper suit and run down the hall and go and put on some headphones and do a scratch track for Mission Space. And that probably started in 2001 or something because it was at least two years of doing that and they kept telling me, oh, eventually we'll hire a real actress. <laughs> but then, two and a half years later, they liked me so much, and I was so deeply embedded into the tracks already that they wound up hiring me yes. to do the final computer voice for Mission Space. So, That's right. uh, so that was it. And you're there to this day. Indeed, That's I'm right. there to this day. And we'll have a new Mission Space, and you'll still be there, because we're not paying a new person to record <laughs> That's right. I, Brian told me that they asked him, do you remember who did that computer voice on that mission space? And he was able to say, why, well, yes, Alison Blanchard, of course. That's right, the delightful one. Alison, by the way, I don't know how many of you are aware of Avatar Land that just opened in Florida. Yes? Have you all been there, I hope? No? Yeah? Have you been there? Did you go on a flight of passage? Do you recognize Dr. Stevens? No, Dr. Ogden, oh, for God's sake. Oh, Hi, I'm Jackie Ogden. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, Allison has actually graduated. She's now a huge film star in Florida. Yes, I'm very famous and important. Yes, she is. <laughs> actually, I just want to run down a couple of the attractions that Allison's voice is heard on. So, she's heard on Star Tours. She's also the computer on that attraction. Do you recognize her from that? She was the host of the World of Color 60th Anniversary Show. Uh, she's in the Iron Man Experience, which actually is in Hong Kong. Oh, I don't think I actually am in that. I, that was a scratch track thing. Oh, yeah, it you're was in. for the actress who is an Asian woman, which I am not. Oh, that's right. That's right. I keep forgetting the things we pay you for and the things we don't pay you for. <laughs> <laughs> the Magic Play Floor on the Disney Cruise Line, oh, Spaceship that's right. Earth. Yes. Mission Space, I already talked about Pirate's Tavern. Yeah. Pirate's Tavern was going to go into the Tom Sawyer Island and never got, never happened, but you recorded voices for that. that it was, was fun. super fun. There it were was a bunch of pirates fun. in a room just making stuff up. Yeah. And a Soarin' Over California, oh, which yeah. is no longer there. Remember, that was one of the early things you did. Yeah. Right? And stuff like that. Hey, Allison, do you ever, personally, do you ever go into the attractions just kind of like wait to hear your voice? I do. I, I actually, I, I am the uh, voice of the uh, luggage scanner in Star Tours, and I will sort of wait in the line and back back the line up, trying to hear <laughs> and saying to my friends, "Really, this is me. I swear." <laughs> yeah. So the next time you zip by that, remember Alice. Remember, it's a me. Lot of time. Like I said, very famous and important. No, she, she's absolutely famous and important. When am I going to work with you again, do you think? Oh gosh, I, I don't know. Oh. Hopefully very soon. Oh, okay, well, it's I up thought to that you. you might know. Huh? <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got some free stuff coming up, so... I'll Fantastic, just... I'm in. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. <laughs> and Chris Edgerly. Hey, Chris. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good. Good, okay. Well, I'm not getting paid today, am I? Huh? I'm not getting paid today, am I? You're not getting paid today. This is one of the free things. Absolutely. Okay. This is as free as it gets. Hey, uh, 
Chris, what was the first Disney job you ever did? Do you recall? The first Disney job I ever had was in Orlando as a waiter at the Whispering Canyon Cafe. The Wilderness Lodge. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I got fired. Uh, I guess they don't call it that at Disney. Um, I was released. As, uh, I was given rehire status. Uh, they, basically, I showed up to work and they said, Chris, come into the office. And that's never, never been a good thing to hear. And they said, Chris, we want someone who's going to be a good employee for us, and uh, you're not that employee. Uh, so if you went to the Whispering Canyon Cafe around November of 95, because they have uh, their traditions, their orientation process is six weeks and, uh, or three months, and I made it through half of that. So I never even made it out of orientation before they realized I was not uh, Disney material. And um, I said, could I at least work today? And they said, no. Um, and they said, this security guard will escort you to your vehicle. And as I'm being walked out off property, um, the guy finds out while he's chatting with me, I guess these, the, the handbook says, make polite conversation with the fired employee. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't want him to be resentful or anything, you know, so. Uh, it comes out that I'm also a stand-up comic and I was touring and he said, Hey, I'd like to get into stand-up comedy. How do you get into that stand-up comedy? And I said, Well, first you have to be able to endure something as humiliating as this. <laughs> Got a leg up there. And, uh, and then the next year, I was still living in Orlando and I got hired, uh, I got cast to do some um, live video referencing work for Mulan. I was Shang for a few scenes in Mulan. I held the sword and waved it around and, and lip-synced to some of the stuff they were already doing for animatics and things like that. And then um, when I moved to Los Angeles, uh, I, I found uh, a wonderful agency, uh, Pat Brady, who's here. But I have the Pat, there's some people here. That's the reason I have a career. And one of the first bookings I had of any kind was my first Disney job, and it was Timothy the Mouse for the for the Dumbo ride. And uh, yeah, so it you know I just thought that oh okay you you do this voice thing for a little bit and then you're in the park. Wow, I didn't I didn't know that. That was one of the very first things I booked, and um, it's funny because while you were they have a cue here that says. Chris Edgerly's Dumbo Audio, and I didn't see the O, and I just thought it said Chris Edgerly's Dumb Audio. It's <laughs> not very polite. And I'm sitting right here. Chris, that is what it said. <laughs> Somebody put in an O. Uh, thank you. Love it. They remember you from Security Land. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah, so if you were poorly served at the Whispering Canyon Cafe in November of 95, thinking, that guy needs to find another job, he did. <laughs> and we're all richer for it, but we certainly are. Yeah. Uh, they, quick, quick, uh, now, you also are the voice of Scuttle in Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Yes. Um, I, uh, yeah. I, when the ride was finished, but it wasn't ready for the public, like, they let a lot of us go on, or I guess it had just done a soft opening, and so Pat and I went on the ride. She said, come on, let's see what you did. And I had a blast, and while I'm on the ride, I'm thinking, there's Scuttle. So I whip out my phone, and I start recording it, right? And then we get to the end of the ride, and two very nice people were waiting on us. And they said, hi, we noticed on the ride you were recording Scuttle. I said, yeah, yeah, I am Scuttle. And I started, yeah, hey, you know, I did the voice of Scuttle on the ride, you know, I just thought I'd record it. They said, that's fantastic. Please hand us your phone. <laughs> they, they're deleting my Scuttle. I'm like, but, but I am Scuttle. It's like, yes, we know that. I'm just going to take this off there. There you go. Thank you. And now you can, like, see three hours of Scuttle on YouTube. It's just, it's constantly, yeah, it's like surveillance footage, but, uh, yeah. Um, I should have waited for it. I know, I should have just waited a little bit, but uh, I took my kids on the Scuttle ride, but, um... Scuttle well, it's not the Scuttle ride. Rehire. That's all I ask. Is that, yeah. I, uh, hey, who is here in, in 2011 for the voice panel? Are you here? Okay. Uh, and who is here in 2013? Okay. 
Both times I stood up in front of all you good folks and said, hey, my wife couldn't be here because she just gave birth to our son Remy. Everybody say, hey, Remy. And you said, hey, Remy. And I got it on videotape. And then in 2013, my daughter Violet had been born. And I said, hey, please say, hey, Violet. And you all said, hey, Violet. Um, could I, would you mind? No, I don't mind at all. Okay, I know, it's the Chris Edgerly show. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, my son Remy and my daughter Violet and my wife Gigi are all here. Would you mind everyone saying, hey, Remy, Violet, and Gigi? Because one day they may forget this, but I'm not going to let them. So, so on three, say, hey, Remy, Violet, and Gigi, go. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, my pleasure, Chris. Thank you. Sir, I saw you were uh, reporting a uh, part of the show you were on the panel. Please leave your phone on your chair. <laughs> Gentlemen, boys and girls, may I remind you that no video or audio recording here. Kids, this is called good comedy right here. This is, this is how you take one for the team right there. There you go. Welcome to Security Land. Ends in 20 seconds. This isn't actually a phone, it's a whatchamahoozit. You don't know, really have one hour in this guy. I don't want to be the voice of Doom Beer, but uh, let's go. Oh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> Let's move on to you, shall we? Yes, let's. Hi, Bob. Hi, Brian. First of all, today is a very special day, I understand, for you. It's Bob's birthday. Hey! That's right. Bob is the voice of Sneezy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. On the Seven Dwarfs Mind Train, right. And on the Seven Dwarfs, but in life, you are also, you're the real Sneezy. I'd be sure to watch out for this. Thank you, Billy Gilbert. Well, uh, now, Bob, what was the first Disney job that you had? Because you have a longer history with Disney than people are aware of. My first job with Disney was in the Fantasy on Parade 1980. They brought back live musicians. And I played tuba in the monk band from the Robin Hood unit. <laughs> I was in Cal State Long Beach, just down the road piece. And they had auditions for live musicians, and I came in, and I was one of the guys that was picked to do that. And I did the All-American College Band the next summer here at Disneyland, and then the next Christmas I did FOP again. And then when I finished at Long Beach, I was subbing in the Disneyland Band and for their tuba players, and found out through a friend who worked in talent booking, they were looking for a brass quintet to play in the Canada Pavilion at Epcot. Got four of my friends together, we auditioned for Sonny Anderson, and at the end of our audition he said, Guys, that was great! What do you think about moving to Orlando? That's why we're here, Sonny! <laughs> Ten days later, we were gone. We got a 17-foot, five guys, college guys, got a 17-foot U-Haul trailer, and we filled a third of it. <laughs> with all of our worldly possessions. So I played in the Canada Pavilion, when Epcot opened in 82, I did that for five years. I worked in the music library as a music copyist and arranger for the company for a while. 
I lost that job through no fault of my own, but anyway. Uh, I was not put on rehire status at all. So. Anyway, I came back to California, and my first job for Disney was doing the voice of Sneezy for Snow White on Ice in 1994. And the gentlemen that I was to work with were all of my heroes. Jim Cummings was Doc. Jeff Glenn Bennett was uh, bashful. Uh, Bill Farmer was sleepy. Corey Burton, grumpy. And uh, Kevin Schoen was uh, happy. And I looked at the list of names and I went, Bob who? <laughs> but that was my first voice that I did for Disney and that's been going now for 23 years. Voice is also heard in Snow White's Scary Adventures here at Disneyland. <laughs> Wait, that that I didn't know. Yes, that's true. Well, I looked it up. I hope that you knew. Well, that. perhaps I do a check, or was that one of the That check is overdue, my friend. That's <laughs> your Peter's. Yeah, I looked. I, okay, well, I. I, hey, I, I my files. I must are have done it if you say it. I said you did. Now let's talk about Sala really quick because. Yes, my friend. Yes. yes. Your friend. yes. How did Sala come into your life? I know how you came to me. The, the first time I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, I started imitating John Reese Davies. And it was very simple. Was, you know, I, my favorite line is, Indy, why does the floor move? Asps, very dangerous. You go first. <laughs> and I've just, I've been doing John for a while, and I started doing some of the video games that he wasn't able to do when he wasn't able to do Gimli and Treebeard. That's right. So, I kind of have him in my back pocket. I actually went to a job one time and the director said, we're so glad you could come in because John was just here yesterday. And I said, why isn't he here now? Well, he had to go fly somewhere and go film something, but he said on his way out, why don't you get that guy who does me? <laughs> so I've never met John. I'd love to, but I know he knows I exist. <laughs> just very quickly. Uh... Bob, at one point, was on the Mark Twain. He was the voice of the captain. Then he sailed off into the sunset and is no longer the captain of the Mark Twain. There's a rumor that we have just finished uh, redoing the steam train at Disneyland, and I'm not allowed to say who the new voice is, but it's- But I will. <laughs> but it hasn't opened yet, so- It hasn't opened yet, but on July 29th, you can hear me. <laughs> Gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome aboard the Disneyland. Don't give it away, bud. Don't give it away. <laughs> like that doesn't start every attraction. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for the I'm sitting next to Bob as the beautiful Yenny Alvarez. Hello, Yenny. Hola. Hola. <laughs> So, any, uh, Yenny, of course, you did hear a little bit of the parking lot tram. You can't avoid her. If you come into the park, you will hear Yenny every single time. She is also on It's a Small World. Which I love. I am thrilled to be in It's a Small World. Well, we're thrilled to have you. What was the first Disney attraction, or any Disney thing that you worked on? That was uh, back in 1999, I think, or 2000. And uh, I think I did 10 at one point. Um, I went in and I did all of them. And, um, I was hoping I would get It's a Small World. And I'm walking in, and he gives me the papers, and I'm looking at it, it's a small world! <laughs> oh my god, it's a small world! <laughs> I was so excited, I think when I left there, I kind of, I was very overwhelmed. I was crying on my way home, oh, it's a small world! <laughs> I'm so thrilled. <laughs> I, I recorded, I've never been caught. <laughs> and uh, my friends recorded and send it to me. And um, I always, you know, you listen to it like five times on the way in. And then I'm always trying to find, where's the Cuban in there? <laughs> There's no Cuban in it's a small world. <laughs> there is now. Yay! <laughs> so we, the last time that we did the panel, a little girl came up to you. Oh, that was the best. Yeah. Um, this little girl 
comes up to me and she said that she learned Spanish because of me, because of listening to the Spanish voiceover at the Disney parks, and she came up and she gave me the entire spiel, and I'm never gonna forget that. She read back to me exactly what I said in It's a Small World. It's the, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's the way you say gracias. Gracias. Do it again. Gracias. <laughs> He's writing you a check right now. I am. Bam. Bam. It's great looking to see if I owe her any money. <laughs> I just want to write, I just want to go down the list. These are the different things that Yenny is actually on. So we it's just recorded for the Disney Cruise Line of the Star Wars Simulator attraction, which for the first time we did entirely in Spanish, and she just was the butchest thing. That's so exciting! It was amazing. <laughs> she really, you pulled out your, 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 your fighter pilot voice for her. Oh, you got it. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's also, she was the voice of Flix Flyers. Uh, let's see, Mis Misadventure Falls, which is a Walt Disney World. A Jumpin' Jellyfish, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, Spaceship Earth, It's a Small World, Maelstrom, which then became the Frozen Attraction, Spaceship Earth, Imagination Institute, Tomorrowland Transit Authority, and I ran out of space. <laughs> so you are certainly our third to go. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you very much. Now, speaking of It's a Small World, sitting next to me is B.J. Ward. Now, B.J., what was your first Disney job? I have been working for Disney so long, I actually sat behind Walt Disney in fourth grade. No, I'm just <laughs> No, I, I started um, singing for, for rides and attractions, right. somebody who worked here, and then I started uh, doing demos for Epcot, and then you, doing a lot of the Epcot, and I've done singing in the French Pavilion, and, um... Spl Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain, and... Rose Rabbit, you know, the, the little, the mommy rabbit as you're going up that sings? You know, that's BJ. Right. And a lot of announcements, and I did, Pete, did you and I do the, uh, Carousel of Progress, Mom and Dad, and the things that went around, and, um, and Hall of Presidents. Was there a Hall of Presidents? There is. There, there still is. Still is. is? Yeah. Okay. Well, well I'm, probably, not, yeah. I'm probably still going to be there. I mean, you don't get people say, "Do you get residuals?" You go, "No." Yeah, you know, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just nice. been a lot of fun because every time I come into work, I never know what I'm going to get to do, and um, and I, m one of the fun things that I I had I liked doing here was. We had to make announcements for the trams and things. But what if happens if you get stuck and the tram isn't moving and they don't want people to panic? And so you'd have to be very comforting, you know? Please do not try to force the doors open. <laughs> we'll be regaining our momentum in just a moment. Please take your children by the hand. Don't let them annoy the other passengers. Thank you. <laughs> Please stop screaming and keep your hands off the other passengers now. <laughs> That was used for the Christmas reel, I believe, for all the employees. No, but it's been a lot of fun. I've loved all my uh, associations with uh, Disney, working for Disney. I just want to mention a few. It's, it's a Small World, American Adventure, Spaceship Earth, Splash Mountain, It's a Small World. Well, I liked it so much I put it down twice. Yeah, there are no small worlds. <laughs> there are no. Uh, she was the people mover before we took it out. Yeah, sorry, it's gone now. But it, she's still hurt at the Tomorrowland Transit Authority in Florida. So it, Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Blast, he's one of the blasters in that. Horizons, Carousel Progress, and Kitchen Cabaret. Anyone here know Kitchen Cabaret? So long gone. That is fabulous. Anyway. I was only four when I did. No, you were, you were, no, and you were delightful. Thank you, BJ. Brian. Okay, so, so next to me is Peter Renaday. And I don't know, if you heard the, did you hear when we introduced Peter that we played uh, Country Bear Jamboree? Is anyone as, in, as like thrilled about Country Bear Jamboree as I am? I so wish I could see it every day. It still plays in Florida. Unfortunately, it's not here in California any longer. So Peter, what was your first Disney job? 
Well, my first Disney job was in 1959 as a messenger at the studio. Got in as a messenger and I was there for about seven months and then moved into the uh, art props department where we did a lot of framing and odd jobs like the book that opens with the Sleeping Beauty cover and things like that. Uh, the first day I worked, I got hired. I thought, someday I'll probably see Walt Disney in person. <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever happen, but maybe. And I walked into the animation building for my first job, and here he is, <laughs> facing me. <laughs> I didn't see him again for about two months, but anyway. That was my first job, and then I started, uh, I got into the Disney Players. There was a group called the Disney Players. It was a theater group on the lot. And they started seeing me in the plays there. We only did one a year for the benefit of the John Tracy Clinic. And that gave them the idea to uh, start picking me up for some of those freebie jobs. The, uh, <laughs> just go down to B stage, they've got a little recording for you to do. And uh, eventually they started paying me for it, which was nice. But I got on camera before I re was really hired off camera in some of the old goodies <coughs> like The Love Bug and. Uh, Computer wore tennis shoes. Barefoot executive, million dollar doc, strongest man in the world, Shaggy DA, the cat from outer space, and I got the oh, Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. All those. Isn't that matter? You're still in it, it still counts. How did, how did Country Bear come along? Country Bear uh, started off, I think, as a temp recording, <laughs> like so many of those things, like Allison's. Temp recordings, and uh, I think they just, they had to program the bear to begin with. Henry was the first one they programmed, and it took about a year or so. I think they got so used to hearing my voice that they thought, oh well, let's go with this voice. <laughs> but anyway, that's how Country Bear got going. <clears throat> I was working for Albertino and uh, that group of guys, and one thing led to another, one job led to another. Uh, doing the Rocket to Mars narration, things like that. Small things. Small little jobs like that. I just want to read a few that I have on my list here. So, I also have you down for Rocket to the Moon. Yeah. That's yeah, Rocket to the Moon, and then, and then Mission to Mars. Snow White's Scary Adventures, we just talked about that one. That apparently you don't know you're in. The Country Bear Ram Jamboree. Oh, uh, Pete is on the sailing ship Columbia. He is the captain. But on the Mark Twain, he's the guy who does the, the Mark Twain. Mark Twain, safe for you. <laughs> but I also do the narration for Mark Twain, if it's still on. We have changed Mark Twain many times. You're still doing the, the narration for the Columbia. Okay. That will never go. Good. But Mark Twain has sailed away three or four times. Uh, also, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Blast, the Astro Blasters, Disney Quest Pirates of the Caribbean, and Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which is ironically the attraction that is where Country Bears used to be, so it's sort of, uh, it, it's, it's, and, and then Mickey's Fellow Magic, and yeah. many, many, many others. I couldn't put them all down because there wasn't time. Well, the one thing that nobody remembers, and it lasted for about 10 years, but for the LP records, for those of you, if anybody out there is old enough to remember LP records, I did the, uh, the voice for Mickey for about 10 years in things like uh, Yankee Doodle Mickey. Uh, oh, I'm a Yankee Doodle Mickey. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Which I don't think I could do anymore, quite frankly. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, that's a good list you got there, Brian. Thank you, Peter. I do my research. Peter Renaday, everybody. Now we'll just skip over Fred Tattish or, oh no, no, I'm sorry, Fred. Hello? Hey! Hello, oh, yeah. Yes! Hello. Yes! So, I mean, I would ask you, which is your first Disney job with me? With you, I think, would it have been Soren, where I play a skier going, woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that was my claim. I think that was. Everybody in that session thinks that they did that for me. Everyone did, I think. It was all over the It might have been you. Yeah. But one of the things that Fred does, and I, I know that you came equipped to do it, oh, yeah. uh, is um, for Jedi Training Academy, he plays a character called, what is it, Darth Vader? <laughs> I was very displeased with the service I had in Orlando by a particular <laughs> waiter. <laughs> Without the 
doesn't even trust him. You don't know, Commander. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm another one who, uh, Pat Brady's the reason I'm here as well. She's another, that's a big reason, my agent, but. Where is she? Where is she? I finally found her somewhere. Right? <laughs> Uh, what else? And then uh, I guess uh, Star Tours, I play some, uh, the Gungan that gets you oh, through. That's, that's right, yeah, you're the guy. Hey, you got to get to the center core. You have to make sure you make it. Yeah. Now it's that guy and then uh, a Wookiee, right? Right. Is that right? That's right, that's right. Uh, I don't feel that you should speak English. Right? Everest, yeah, the big, the big monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Attack you in Everest. Yeah. Right. And then for Grizzly Rapids in Hong Kong, you're, you play bears. I do, I play bears. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's kind of close to Chewie, actually. Isn't it? <laughs> I think Chewie is kind of a bear. And then until, until we took you out, you were the captain in Space Mountain. Oh, yes, he took out. Welcome back, space travelers. That was, that, was, uh, yeah, that was Space Mountain for me, but now I, I've flown up as well and haven't returned, but it's okay. It's okay. You'll come back one day, I guarantee. <laughs> oh, well, well. And then Fred's in uh, the new uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. Except your baby Groot in that one. What's that? Your baby Groot. Yeah. You guys, <laughs> what else? Oh, I don't know. What else, Fred? This one I'm screaming in the park. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> now, Fred is Fred is amazing, and I am I am so lucky to have him. I am so lucky to be working oh, with you. Oh, stop it! It's no, true. I'm to work with you. It's really been fun. Ones. Now I'm the, the, the <laughs> you are the best. The, the weird, the craziest part about doing the Vader thing is is uh, the two different ways you have to work with. Like, there's two types of Vaders. There's one where you're talking to adults and teenagers, and one when you're talking to little kids. And so, the, you know, the kids, it's, you don't want to scare them. So it's like, I sense the force is greeting you. When your, break, when your training is complete, you will join me, you know? And then, if it's an adult, it's, I sense there is a betrayer among us. <laughs> Maybe a Jedi. <laughs> it's like the kind of more Jedi. James Earl Jones, come on, let's see what up for him. Let's, that's the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. No, thank you. So, sitting next to Fred is Corey Burton. And Corey is every other voice in the park. <laughs> We'll start with, of course, he is the voice of the parking lot tram. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside while the tram is moving. And watch your brats. <laughs> well, you should hear the outtakes. <laughs> no, you're not. And then we play. <laughs> Uh, and then one of the things that you do that I, I adore, because the first job that I think I worked on was uh, uh, Back to Neverland, which was, in, uh, which was in Florida for many years, and you play Captain Hook. Oh yes, well the very first voice I did for Disney was the voice of Hans Conrad, who was out of town at the time, and Doris Butler was working on a slide film for Disney, and uh, Dawes said, yeah, I know this kid, uh, he does a good, pretty good Hans impression. Uh, and he called me and said, well, you want to audition for this? And, okay. And that ended up being my first uh, professional gig. Was, was Back to Neverland the first time you did Hook? Maybe? Uh, no, no, no. The, I think the first was... Um, for Peter Pan's flight, right? Uh, 1980? Might have been. I wasn't there. Yeah. 1980? You were doing the hook in 1980? Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. We actually we recorded those tracks in '78, I think. Is that right? And uh, they have. Was that ever going to go in? <laughs> <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> but yeah. So, but you're also your hook. But I've also recorded you for the Mad Hatter. Yes. <laughs> It's fun to do Edwin. Everyone wants to do Edwin, you know. <laughs> Monster! <laughs> what? Monster! Monster! <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and, uh, and then he is also several voices in Pirates of the Caribbean for his intro. I actually played the voice that you hear on the, the boat before you take off the safety spiels. But uh, Corey is also the captain of the well, because we had to re-record that voice. Yeah, 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 we yeah, have yeah, to O'Malley. yeah. And you're also the, uh, the, we call him the poop pirate, but he's the pirate that's uh, on the, uh, in, next to the, um, well, uh, the, the barrel. You used to have the lady in it, now it's got Johnny Yeah, Batman. yeah, yeah, the drunken pirate. That's right, the drunken pirate. Now, now he's worried about the treasure map. That's right. But we keep changing his story. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm proud of the movie franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and then on occasion, I know that you, you uh, moonlight over at the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> yes. Haunted Mansion holiday. At Christmas time. It's true. It's true. He plays the ghost host for the Haunted Mansion. As I told before, you know, Paul Fries was my idol and my inspiration to do this for a living. Um, and, uh, you know, I would never accept a gig to oh, sound like Fries. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> you know? I couldn't do that, but uh, but there was a, a little demo being recorded. Uh, they were going to play around with an idea for this uh, Nightmare Before Christmas uh, overlay, and I said, "Oh, okay." And I and I went in, and and they had an old uh, RCA rhythm microphone and 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 a very good script and, and a brilliant Bruce Healy. Um, overseeing it and uh, started recording and it's like, and Bruce was like, hold on, hold on, keep going, keep going, keep going. So this is good, this is good. And I was like, okay, and I tuned more into the, the original Freeze uh, narration tracks and recorded the whole, the whole piece uh, as a demo. And I thought, okay, well that's that. <laughs> And then, I don't know how many months later, they said, oh, uh, well, the, the, we're going to go with it. We're using you. <laughs> really? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and ever since, uh, I've been the, uh, the, uh, uh, what would you call it? Uh, the, 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 the ghost host, a fabulous ghost host. Yeah, well, the, 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 the B team now <laughs> ghost host. <laughs> Uh, He's the A team. No. Ah, Corey. A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I want to tell you one thing about Corey that's really, I think, shows the kind of person he is. When we want to do something with the ghost host that Corey does not believe in, he will actually turn down the job. Oh uh, yeah. That's and, right. And complain. And complain bitterly. Very bitterly. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it. The Haunted Mansion attraction is what sparked my whole interest in, in you know, doing, doing this kind of work for a living. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a shy, nerdy little guy with Asperger's, and I never thought I'd be in real show business. But that just so inspired me when I first walked into the Haunted Mansion. I just thought, oh! Oh, I have to be in this world where there are people like that that can do miraculous uh, vocal things, uh, characterizations that that move people and delight people and, and, and in a way change the world. I mean, uh, it, it's a delightful 
creepy, funny fantasy. Uh, that it's just, uh, I mean, it continues to inspire. Well, we're lucky to have you there, Corey. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, good God. I'm just lucky people put up with me. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Camille. Camille Dixon, everybody. So Camille, I know that you do, predominantly, you do a lot of recording for California Adventure. I know you do the rope drop and various other recordings. How did that all come about? Well, I think my very first um, Disney job was um, a client had introduced the two of us 17 years ago. And so when, when for Food and Wine Festival at, at DCA in the mid-2000s, um, they said, you know, it would be kind of nice to have a male and female voice doing this. Doesn't, doesn't Bill's girl do voiceover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that session, um, I had the iconic line of ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I thought, I can't do this like as an Im impression of Bill, you know? I just, I felt like it was being inauthentic. So I did it some other way, and they're like, no. <laughs> no. We have a cadence. We have a thing. Please do it that way. So it's like, oh, okay, I can do that. And then a few years later, when we opened Buena Vista Street in Cars Land, um, Bill had kind of put that on his calendar, thinking that maybe he'd be doing the press events. And he got a phone call from the studio, the folks that were handling all the events for that day, and um, they said, what's your wife doing? <laughs> so in one phone call, he was replaced, and now he's my assistant. So. <laughs> really good time, of course, you know, competing with parks. Anything yours can do, mine can do better, you know. <laughs> Cocktails, lobster nachos, hello. <laughs> and California Adventure has gotten so much greater over the past few years. California Adventure is the awesome park it always should be, and I'm so proud of the way this park has grown up. It's a beautiful place. Very thrilled to be part of it. A lot of fun, and that rope drop is just my favorite. Oh, I, I love it. Actually, I was gonna, I was gonna play that, but it stretched on just a bit too long. It's kind of long. It's, it's, but yeah, just that opening line. In 1923, Walt Disney arrived to follow his dreams. It's like, who's not gonna have a great day after that? <laughs> That's so true. And actually, I heard I was finally there for rope drop, so I, I did get to hear it in the park, and it's fantastic. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. So, I don't know if I have to introduce the next man on the panel, the one at the end over there. Hi, Brian. Hi, Bill. <laughs> so, Bill, just, just, because I know your story stretches on and on and on and on, but I do want to know. You know, she explains that if somebody asks me what time it is, I'm going to tell them how to build a watch. <laughs> My, my stories are never short. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate part of all of this. But just tell us, how did you end up doing the, the voices that you do at Disneyland? The voices I do at Disneyland are basically uh, a, a character that I've developed over the years because of one man who said these words. <laughs> and for those of you speaking only English, it's... Keep going. Yeah. All right. It didn't work. Well, it's uh, so much for nonetheless. You know, please remain seated. I, Jack has Jack did that line in uh, the year that the, the Matterhorn was first introduced, and that has to be 1960 something. 59. Like 59. Yeah, it was part of that. It's part of that opening. Yeah. Okay. So that's been there for decades, and Jack was one of these people who always came up with something wonderful and new, and I thought, boy, if, if I'm going to set the bar high, I might as well set it just as high as I possibly can, because I have this guy to look forward to, and he does things like this. Let's play that second one. Number three. Your attention, please. The Disneyland Limited 
Now loading for a trip around Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom through the Grand Canyon and Primeval World. Boy! Ladies and gentlemen, my predecessor and the guy who set the bar so high for all of us, Jack Wagner. I will tell you just a quick story about Jack, because Jack at the very uh, last parts of his life suffered from something, a condition that none of us should ever have. And he managed to, uh, to plug through with a whole lot of help from his son, Mike, doing things uh, for the park. He suffered from a condition called uh, dysphonia, uh, spasmodic dysphonia. And it basically rendered his vocal cords in spasm from time to time, and he literally could not work. So all of the things that you hear in the later years are, are evidence of this man's perseverance and his ability to, to just get things done. And I hope that uh, as my later years approach, and they're not that far away, uh, I can, I can kind of carry on with that because he has made Disneyland and all of the Disney parks truly a wonderful place to go because of his generosity. And so I'm, I'm Jack Wagner is my hero. That's all there is to it. So it all started in a small garage in 1991 somewhere. I, <laughs> Now, how did, you, how did you end up getting that first job, though? That's that first job came because a friend of mine uh, recommended me, unbeknownst to me, and, and told me to come over and take a look at that friend's new digital equipment. I got there, we, uh, we took a look at all the new digital toys. This was 1991, so digital toys were pretty cool at those days. <laughs> and not, not routine, yes. And, uh, he said, I understand you know Jack Wagner. And I said, no, I've never met the man, but he's my hero. And uh, he says, well, do me a favor and read this. And it was, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few minutes, the lights surrounding Disneyland will be dim so that you may fully enjoy the party that is the Main Street Electrical Parade. Please remain in the same area until the lights return to normal. You've all heard this, right? I read it, he had me read it a second time, and uh, I, he says, come on out. I was in the recording booth, he says, come on out. And I said, what, what's the deal? He says, well, I don't make the final decision, but by Thursday, you'll know that you are the new announcer at Disneyland. <laughs> Jack is retiring. I went, that was my first job. So, that's how that went. Never underestimate the power of friendship, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! So there. That's a good story. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. No. Are there any tears? <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, I thought it might be fun for you all to hear our fa fabulously talented panel read something for you so that you can see that I didn't just play the tapes, they actually do this work. And the only thing I could come up with is I found a I found Hunchback of Notre Dame, and it's the kids' book version, so I'm going to pass it down to Allison, and starting with her, she will read the, a little bit of Hunchback and then pass it to Chris. Allison, if you could read it as the computer voice, I think we'd all love that. Why, of course, Brian. One morning, as the bells of the great cathedral of Notre Dame echoed over the rooftops of Paris, a gypsy performer named Clopin entertained a crowd of eager children gathered before his puppet theater. <laughs> and Chris, could you please continue as Scuttle? <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, said Clopin. Is that how you say his name? Because I'm not sure if that's accurate, but okay. <laughs> they are beautiful, no? But you know the bells do not ring themselves. They don't ask the puppet Clopin war on his hand. No, answered Clopin, point to the belt that the story just goes on and on. Hush, <laughs> and I will tell you the tale, a tale of a man and a monster. I'm sorry, I will continue. 
The children listened to Clopin as he told the story of a gypsy family who, nearly 20 years before, had slipped into Paris only to be met at the dock by the evil judge Claude Frollo and his brutal soldiers. Oh my. Frollo despised gypsies, for to him, they represented all that was had in the world, and everything was bad as well. And I really screwed it up. So, <laughs> but covered up really well. Huh? And now our delightful parking lot tram voice. Yeah, in English. Would you like it in English? <laughs> English. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, am I going to have to translate like no, all the time? No, we'll do that to you. Para su seguridad. <laughs> family was taken prisoner, Frollo noticed a gypsy woman clutching a bundle. He commanded the soldiers to seize what he thought were stolen goods. The terrified woman ran across the square, then up the steps of the magnificent cathedral of Notre Dame. Desperately, she pounded on the doors crying, Sanctuary! Please give us sanctuary! That was so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> and now, of course, the delightful BJ will do it as the voice of It's a Small World. Throw the thunder up behind the woman on his horse and wrap it up bundle. They struggled. And she fell upon the stone steps and struck her head. And Frodo looked upon the dead woman. The parcel in his arms began to cry. <laughs> A baby, muttered Frodo as he unwrapped the blanket to look inside. No, a monster, he gasped when he saw the poor misshapen infant women. <laughs> Our fearless leader, Brian, the nicest guy in the world. So much fun to work with. Give him a villain. Give him a villain. He's doing. You can Always be. prepared. <laughs> oh, now I lost my pick. No. It's Perfect. with the baby, Kate. With, oh, with the baby? He doesn't go no, from here. This is a... Oh, there we go. We okay. can skip to that part. Oh, we'll skip to that part. It's all about babies crying. Peter, would you do this as Homer from the Country Bear Jamboree? Henry, sorry. <laughs> I don't have notes. Frollo was about to drop the baby into the dock. <laughs> that wouldn't be very nice at all, would it? Open of a well when the voice of the archdeacon pierced the night and stopped him. Under the watchful eyes of Notre Dame, Lord Frollo suddenly feared for the fate of his soul. When he asked the archdeacon what he should do, the priest told him to adopt the infant and raise him as his own. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Frollo agreed, but only if the child could live in the bell tower of Notre Dame. <laughs> well, Fred, I was going to ask you to do it as the Wookiee, but why don't you just do it as Darth? I am <laughs> Just pick a voice. Oh, well, you know, I was in this picture. Oh. oh. I played brutish. Everybody clear the street. Then Clopin posed a riddle to his spellbound audience. Now can you guess who is the monster and who is the man? Perfect. Yeah, I'm over by 30 seconds. <laughs> As the morning dawned, all the people of Paris worked to remove the traces of Frollo's rampage. The curious crowd surrounded him, no one quite knowing what to say or do. Then a little girl walked up to Quasimodo, walked, not ran, and gently <laughs> touched his face. Hi, 
are never going to be able to get that one going. In the bell tower high above, Hugo, Victor, and Laverne smiled as they watched the happy scene below. Hip hip hooray! shouted the jubilant, jubilant crowd. Oh yeah. As they carried Quasimodo on their shoulders through the square. They cried, hip hip hooray! And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's how the story ends.